Hey guys, it is finally time, it's finally dried out enough to be able to do our espalier video. So if you have a small space garden, or any garden really, uh, but you wanna be more artistic with your fruit trees, but if you have a small space garden in particular, uh, and you wanna grow fruit trees, and you feel you don't have enough room for a mini orchard, let's take it even minier. Tiny, tiny orchard that you can grow fruit, and a lot of fruit, more than you would think. So let's talk just for a minute about what you can expect from an espaliered fruit tree. Uh, you can expect a lot. Maybe first we should talk about what is an espalier. An espalier is a way of uh, growing a fruit tree to maximize the production in a minimal amount of space in a creative way. And there are many different forms that an espalier can take. I'm showing them over here on the, this side. Usually they're against a wall, but they don't have to be. I'm gonna show you both ways of doing that today because some I'm gonna have here against a wall and some I'm gonna have out bordering a fruit orchard. Now it might look confusing, it might look difficult, it might look like you have to be some kind of an artist or sculptor to do some of these things, but you don't. So I've got three fruit trees here planted against this wall. And I'm not gonna go through the planting process, I already have a video on that, I'll link it down below. And they're all in different stages. Now this here happens to be a black mission fig, it is in the smallest stage of all three trees, but they grow pretty quickly, so you know it should catch up. Uh, this is a already espaliered tree that I bought at the garden center last year, and it was purchased just like this. It, may, it might not have had as many of these side branches, but it was already pruned into the shape of an espalier. And then this is a fruit tree, this is an apple. That's a Fuji apple, by the way. This apple is Anna, and it was just purchased a couple of months ago, bare root, and you can see all of these branches that it has. And I'm gonna show you how to take this and turn it into something like that. But I'm also gonna show you what to look for in a tree like this, this size. And I'm also gonna show you how to train this and this to become full on espaliers. So I know what you're thinking and I know what you're thinking because every time I showed my espaliered fruit trees at my last house against our garage wall, I would always get viewers concerned about the foundation of the house and if the roots were going to mess up that foundation. So I'm gonna first go over the training support. Then I'm gonna tell you what to look for in a fruit tree. If you're gonna to go to the garden center and find a fruit tree. And then I'm gonna show you how to trim and prune them into an espalier. So first of all, if we're gonna be growing it along a wall, you're gonna need some guide wires. Now this is just galvanized 16 gauge uh, wire that you can find at any garden center. And I've got some screw eyes. I've got three in the house here. Now at my last house, I actually had dr drove um, a two by four into the ground on each end and had them running on that. We had a stucco house. I was gonna do that here as well, but the foundation comes out a little too far and the trees were gonna be too far out from the house, like a foot and a half or more. So I decided I would go ahead and screw these into the house. We do have these wooden strips that bring it out further from the wall. So that's going to be helpful. If you don't have these, you could you know, mount some wood onto the house and then put your screw eye into that. Then you hook on your turnbuckle and then your wire goes all the way down to the other end where we have another screw eye. Now this is a 26 foot wall and the wire is plenty tight. You don't need a support in the center because ultimately these trees are gonna support themselves once they've grown a little bit bigger. So these aren't gonna have to carry the weight of branches full of fruit. Now, if you aren't putting these against a wall, if you're putting them out amongst the garden, um, just drive two, I'd say four by fours into the ground at each end and then run your wires and that would be good out there. That's what I'm gonna do up here. The orchard's just not ready for that yet. Okay, so let's talk about choosing the trees and what you wanna look for. This fig tree was not originally planned as an espalier. And so it's going to be a little bit different, different to train. All I did at this point was plant it so that most of the branches were on the same plane or parallel to the wall and not sticking out forward. Um, if they are sticking out forward, like some of these that I'll probably wanna use, I'm just gonna slowly train them back. But I'm gonna let this get a little bit bigger before I do anything to it. 
This tree, on the other hand, what I looked for at the garden center was lots of branches, number one, which this had, and lots of branches that were on the same plane. As you see these two right here, really good branches. This one here, really good off to the side branch. And all the way up, there are branches that we can make choices to be the ones that will grow along the wall. Now, as far as how far apart these wires should be, um, really, it depends on the tree, but you can train them into pretty much any amount of spacing. So I went about 16 inches up for the first one. I kind of used this tree as a model. 16 inches up for the first one that these will hook on here. And then about a foot, well, exactly a foot between the next two. As these grow, I will add more wires going across as tall as I want them to be. Now, I would actually love them to completely fill in below the windows and then up the sides and in the middle to about the top of the windows and just have this as a nice fruit tree covered wall might actually have the added benefit of blocking the sun from hitting the house. This is a south facing wall and might keep the, the two bedrooms a little bit cooler. When you plant your tree, you want to slightly angle it in from the house. So these are about a foot, a little less than a foot planted away from the house. Uh, you wanna lean them back into the house so you don't have to stretch the branches back and have the trunk be out here and the branches kind of go back. It would look a little bit weird. So once you've got your tree planted and your wires up, all you need are some trimmers and some green tape. Now, I don't use a lot of green tape. I don't use a lot of plastic if I don't have to in the garden, but this is one of those situations where you really need something that's going to last for a few seasons and it's going to stretch as the branches get bigger. And so that's where this comes in. Now there's a special way of tying these so they don't, uh, you don't hurt the branch because this branch is gonna be right up against the metal of the wire. And as the wind blows and it moves around, you don't want it to be rubbing hard on the branches. So when you make your tie, you want to put it behind the wire, cross it over, and then tie this in. So you can see that that puts uh, a, a barrier between the wire and the branch. So again, we cross it over itself and tie it in. And you just want to tie it as often enough as you need to along the branch to really kind of get a straight uh, structure to this branch. Now, if we want this branch to grow longer, to keep going down this wire, which I do uh, probably a couple more feet, then we don't want to tie this end piece down because plants are always thinking about growing upwards. And so if this is horizontal, it's gonna start putting more energy into this growth that can grow upwards rather than this that can grow longer. So we wanna leave it up a little bit so that it can do that. And then as it gets longer, we can lay more and more of it down along the row. All right, so I'm just gonna keep tying in the rest of this. All right, and that's what it should look like when you're done. Now I'll come by and snip all those green ties a little bit shorter. Now, as far as pruning these branches that are growing up, you want to keep them pruned, you wanna space them about four to six inches apart. So some of these on the end are getting a little close and you don't want them to be longer than five or six inches. So this is probably as long as you want it right there. So this one's a tad long, this one's a tad long. This one here, I am leaving. The garden center pruned the top out of the tree right here. However, I want this to grow taller, so this will now be my new leader. So as it grows taller, I'll be able to tie it into another wire up above to keep it growing straight. And then side branches will eventually come out of it and I'll be able to train those horizontally. All right, so that was the easy one. The garden center did most of that for us. Now, we're gonna tackle that one. 
So first we're gonna find our bottom two branches and that's pretty easy on this one. It'd be the lowermost two branches that grow out uh, long. So we'll go ahead and tie those in. And if you can only find or afford smaller trees than this, um, I have to tell you, they will be producing in no time at all. Because when we, when I bought my apple trees at our last house, uh, I'll try to dig up a picture here and show you how they started. They were way smaller than this. And within two to three years, I was harvesting so much fruit off of them, I could not believe it. So in two to three years from that size, they would have pretty much covered this, this entire three rows of wire. And it's just amazing. In the spring, you've got all the color of the blooms all covering the house. And then it leaves out those bright green leaves for spring. One of my very first videos was espaliering a lemon tree. I'll link that down below. Just be aware that it's not the level of production that it could be. <laughs> Another thing, you, you want to make sure that you keep the branch on the same side of the wire. You don't want it to be twisting around the wire because that can cause rubbing issues. All right, now we're going to look for our next branches to go on this wire here. And I think all of these can be discounted. So what we're going to do is just cut those off right at the trunk. Now, the ones that are facing the front or the back of the wall that we well, these are broken, so I'm going to get rid of those anyway. So now, once we're getting close to this second wire, we have to start making some decisions and seeing which ones we're going to keep. Now, obviously, this one is not a contender. This one's facing completely forward, and there's other choices, so it's not a contender either. When you're cutting these, you want to put the sharp side of the blade against the tree you're gonna get a much better cut and a much smoother cut. So now, we gotta choose between this one and this one for this wire here. This one's longer. This one is kind of more at the level, but then has to bend down. This is gonna be the only one that's really available for over here. And it's okay, it's gonna grow. I think because this is longer and because this one, this first branch starts lower than this one, We'll start this lower than this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this branch here. So we'll go ahead and tie those two in. So I'm actually not gonna tie this any further down because I really need this to grow. So I want it to maintain for now its vertical growth position. And I'm not gonna tie this one in at all because that's gonna push this into a downward facing position. So that's gonna stay. Now we're moving up to the next wire. So it could be this one, it's nice and long. However, it's a little bit close to this one. So we'll probably go with this one instead, or we could go with this one. So let's at least take off the ones we know we're not going with. This one, this one, this one. While this is a nice long branch, oh, it really is tough because wonder if we could, we could bend this down here. So this is where you have to make a judgment call. Because this is a tiny branch and while it will grow, this one could just be bent down into its place very gently. You'd have this kind of funky, you know, shape there, but it's going to be covered in leaves eventually. So I think I'm actually going to do that. Yeah, I think I'm gonna cut this one off and go ahead and go with this branch. Now, slowly it could be trained to go a little bit further down and not have such a crazy, you know, hump to it. So slowly I could train this down into a better shape. Will I? I don't know. Now here's one thing I want to point out. If for whatever reason this tip here, this one was cut off at some point. So if it's cut off, if it just loses its apical dominance and doesn't continue growing and all you get is more shoots out the top, then you can take one of these shoots that come out of the top and just train it 
as the new leader to grow again along the wire. That's totally fine. There's no difference between the branches in that way. Okay, so there's a couple small ones here that I know we're not going to be using. I'm just gonna trim those off and get them out of our sight. <sighs> okay, so now we could use this one or this one, but I'm thinking either this trained this way or this trained down, which kind of is cool because it then matches this side. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. So we're gonna go ahead and, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and tie this in. It's a little stiff and if it breaks, I don't want to have already cut off one that I can still use. So let's tie it in first. Just be really gentle with it. You can always come in here and put a tighter one in a couple of months when this is uh, used to being at this angle. It could get lower, but actually, you know what? That looks good. So I'm gonna cut these off. And we don't need this one anymore. So there's a little one growing out here. Don't need that. And we don't need this or this or this. Now this one is going to be tied in here. Now this branch is thinner, so it's a little bit more flexible than these other ones. So I can maneuver it just a little bit more into the angle I want. And I'm gonna give it one more tie just so this end piece isn't facing down. All right, so these branches up here, uh, they will eventually be trained like this. So I'm actually gonna stick this under the house a little bit because I don't have another wire going across just yet, but I wanna get them started. I might put another wire up actually, since this is ready. And then this piece here, we're, we're to the level we need to be at the window. So I'm gonna go ahead and right above this last branch that we're using, I'm gonna just chop that right off there. All right, so just one more reminder. You let these horizontal branches grow as long as you want to and then cut them off at the end once they've reached the level of growth that you want. You let any branches that you want to create a higher framework, you let them grow until they're to where you want it, then you cut them off and then that will force more energy down into the growth to make the new side ones. Any other vertical growth you want to keep to finger length maybe five to six inches at most and each one of these branches that grow out of the main branch are going to produce fruiting spurs so just at this size right here i mean you could have a ton of fruit just on a tree this size but let's say you don't have room to grow vertical which is a little bit rare but let's say you have a small garden and even this, maybe along one side of your garden would cast too much shade on your vegetables. You can do step over apple trees. And basically all that is, is an apple tree that is cut right here instead of here. So all you have is this first line of branches and those can grow long and they can border a vegetable garden or, or vegetable bed for that matter and you'll have apples growing all along the border of your vegetable garden or vegetable bed. So I know what you're thinking and I know what you're thinking because every time I showed my espalier fruit trees at my last house against our garage wall, I would always get viewers concerned about the foundation of the house and if the roots were going to mess up that foundation. Obviously, I'm not going to give you advice for your house. Um, our last foundation was a typical concrete foundation. Um, the thing about this kept this foundation here is over two feet thick. So I'm definitely not worried about it here. Uh, the thing about espalier fruit trees is they are on this. They're much smaller than a full grown fruit tree. Even though you can train them to grow up a wall as tall as a fruit tree, they're only on one plane. There's not branches 365 degrees around the tree. And what that means is a tree only needs large enough roots to support what's above ground growing. And so if there's not a lot above ground growing, the root system doesn't have to be huge and expansive and thick. Five or six years into the espaliers we had at the other house, we had to put irrigation in and I had to dig a trench right down that bed. 
and the biggest root I found was just a little bit thicker than my thumb. If you're concerned, you can put a, a, a if you're concerned, you can put, you know, a, a if you're concerned, you can put a, a, a metal barrier. You can get like a corrugated metal, bury that against the house, bury that against the house. And you know, that should force the roots out the other way. But anyway, you can make that decision. I'm just telling you what I know and have experienced myself. I hope this video inspires you to know that you can grow fruit, trees, in as small of a space as you can possibly imagine. If you learned something, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, share it with a gardening friend, and I'll see you next time.